This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Great. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. If I could have your attention. My name is Stacy Yarborough, and I am your town clerk pursuant to the North Haven Town Charter, Section 901 and 903. This special town meeting will now come to order. Again, my name is Stacy Yarborough. I am your town clerk. And um, we, before we can actually begin, what we do first is we need to vote upon a meeting moderator. Just a little bit of background. The meeting moderator is nominated and elected by the members of the meeting, which are you. It is the moderator's function to bring before this meeting all items of the warning and to assist in obtaining the objective of the meeting while also ensuring the rights of each individual voter who might wish to be heard. The moderator's duties also include helping any member of the meeting, again you, who seeks clarification as to the issues before you and or to advise you with regard to parliamentary procedure. Further, when it's time to vote on any issue tonight, um, including the vote for our meeting moderator, please be aware that you must be an elector. Now, what is an elector? An elector in our town is the following. The person who wishing to vote who has been a registered voter in the town oops, at the time of the most recent election or one who pays taxes to the town on an assessment of property of not less than $1,000 on the most recent grand list a citizen of the United States, and lastly, 18 years of age or older. Keep in mind that this regulation is very strict and will be in effect all night during all proceedings. If you're not 100% sure, if you're an elector, I do have our um, list, our registry list up with me, and you can check with me just to be 100%. With that in mind, and with all of that being said, I now open the floor for meeting up a uh, moderator. Is there anyone out there who would like to nominate someone? Is there a second? Second. Anyone else like to nominate someone uh, for meeting moderator? Hearing none, at this time I'm going to put it to a vote. All in favor of Teresa Renciato Vili as this evening's special town meeting moderator, please signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, signify by saying nay. I now declare Teresa Renciato Vili as the moderator for this evening's special town meeting. Good evening. Um, the town clerk will now read the call of the meeting for tonight. <laughs> Having received appropriate written notice and warning of the special town meeting and posted same, I hereby convene the special town meeting of the electors and citizens qualified to vote at town meetings pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 7-6 for the purpose of considering and voting upon the following item. One to consider and discuss the recommendations of the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen. A, to appropriate $2 million for, social, for school security improvements. The appropriation may be spent on the acquisition and installation of equipment, furnishings, and materials and site improvements, including but not limited to systems, alarms, remote software, displays and computers, services, servers, and, servers and storage, identification systems, digital camera systems, video slash intercom entry systems, radios, upgraded exterior lighting, door access controls, doors, tamper resistant glass, window replacement, window film, weather equipment, fencing, generators, training, legal fees, net interest on borrowings, other financing costs, and other expenses related to the project. The Board of Selectmen may reduce or modify the scope of the project and the entire appropriation may be spent on the project as so reduced or modified. B, to issue bonds or notes of the town in the amount not to exceed $2 million, 
to provide that the amount of bonds or notes authorized to be issued shall be reduced by any grants received for the project. C. To issue temporary notes of the town in an amount not to exceed $2 million in anticipation of such bonds or notes. D. To determine or authorize the first selectman and the treasurer of the town to determine the amounts, dates, interest rates, maturities, redemption provisions, form, and other details of the bonds or notes, and to perform all other acts which are necessary or appropriate to issue the bonds or notes. E. To take such action to allow temporary advances of available funds, which the town reasonably expects will be in reimbursed from the proceedings of borrowings, and to authorize the first selectman and the treasurer to, bid, to bind the town pursuant to such representations and covenants as they deem necessary or advisable in order to maintain the continued exemption from federal income taxation of interest on the bonds or notes authorized by the resolution if issued on a tax exempt basis, including covenants to pay rebates of investments earnings to the United States in future years. F. To authorize the first selectman and the treasurer to make representations and enter into written agreements for the benefit of holders of the bonds or notes to provide secondary market disclosure information, which agreements may include such terms as they deem advisable or appropriate in order to comply with applicable laws or rules pertaining to the sale or purchase of such bonds or notes. And G, to authorize the first selectman, the treasurer, and other proper officers of the town to take all other action which is necessary or desirable to complete the project and to issue bonds or notes to finance the aforesaid appropriation. And this notice was dated at North Haven, Connecticut on the second day of January, 2020. The town clerk will read item one of the agenda this evening. Uh, Tonight there is one item, so it's a repeat of what I've just said, I'm sorry. The town clerk will read item number one of the agenda, and that is to consider and discuss the recommendations of the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen to appropriate $2 million for school security improvements. The appropriation may be sent on the spent on the acquisition and installation of equipment, furnishings, and materials, and site improvements, including, but not limited to, systems, alarms, remote software, displays and computers, servers and storage, identification systems, digital camera systems, video slash intercom entry systems, radios, upgraded exterior lighting, door access controls, doors, tamper resistant glass, window replacement, window film, weather equipment, fencing generators, training, legal fees, net interest on borrowings, other financing costs, and other expenses related to the project. The Board of Selectmen may reduce or modify the scope of the project, and the entire appropriation may, may be spent on the project as so reduced or modified. B, to issue bonds or notes of the town in an amount not to exceed $2 million to provide that the amount of bonds or notes authorized to be issued shall be reduced by any grants received by the pro for the project. C. To issue temporary notes of the town in an amount not to exceed $2 million in anticipation of such bonds or notes. D. To determine or authorize the first selectman of the and the treasurer of the town to determine the amounts, dates, interest rates, maturities, redemption provisions, form, and other details of the bonds or notes, and to perform all other acts which are necessary or appropriate to issue the bonds or notes. E, to take such action to allow temporary advances of available funds, which the town reasonably expects will be reimbursed from the proce proceeds of borrowings, and to authorize the first selectman and the treasurer to bind the town pursuant to such representations and covenants as they deem necessary or advisable in order to maintain the continued exemption from federal income tax taxation of interest on the bonds or notes authorized by the resolution if issued on a tax exempt basis, including covenants to pay rebates of investments earnings to the United States in future years. F to authorize the first selectman and the treasurer to make representations and enter into written agreements for the benefit of holders of the bonds or notes to provide secondary market disclosure information, which agreements may include such term as they deem advisable or appropriate in order to comply with the applicable laws or rules pertaining to the sale or purchase of such bonds or notes, and g. 
to authorize the first selectmen, the treasurer, and other proper officers of the town to take all other action which is necessary or desirable to complete the project and to issue bonds or notes to finance the aforesaid appropriation. Thank you, Stace. So for the ensuing discussion, everyone who wishes to speak will get a chance to comment before anyone else will be called a second time. Discussion will be limited to this one item, and is there any discussion for item number one? For Selectman Frieda? Thank you very much and welcome to tonight's meeting for those that are here and for those that are watching on North Haven TV. Early last year, our superintendent of schools, Patrick Sterk, and I started to have discussions about something very, very important, enhancing and increasing the safety of our children throughout our school system. With the emergence of our middle school and the completion of that middle school, that middle school was up to state standards in terms of impeccable safety infrastructure and protocols. But we had been discussing what we need to do at our elementary schools, many of whom are 60 years old and over. We also were speaking about this high school, which was completed in 2007, and we concluded and we know that the high school needs certain security upgrades also. So when we look at an enrollment of over 3,000 students here in North Haven, and we look at vulnerabilities that can potentially exist in our elementary schools, the four elementary schools, and our high school to a certain extent, it's very important to this administration. It's very important to me personally. It's very important to our superintendent of schools and our board of education and many other elected officials. We need to do whatever we can to ensure that the students in our North Haven school system are safe and secure our most precious asset, our children. We're at a point here, ladies and gentlemen, in North Haven, where the town is incredibly strong and stable financially. We continue to be re-rated AAA status, which allows us to bond at the lowest possible interest rates in an interest rate environment that's already very low. The town continues to balance budgets, deliver modest surpluses, and increase the grant list. When we look at the financial aspect of this, and we can never put a price on the safety of our children, the $2 million in bonding, up to $2 million, will be amortized over 20 years. The approximate increment on debt every year for those 20 years will range from $120,000 to $140,000 a year. At a time that when we've peaked at debt right now, over the course of the next 15 years, the debt will either remain stable or decline. When we look at years from now, there'll be a significant decrease in our debt structure here in town. At the same time, we know there could be grants out there that we could apply for after we complete this project should the public vote on it. For those that may ask, well, what does this do to the mill rate? I can guarantee you there will be no mill rate increase this year, even with this $2 million bonding. I've recently announced a record grand list growth, growth here in town. We will lead the state in grand list growth this year. We're at the point here, ladies and gentlemen, like I mentioned earlier, there will not be a mill rate increase this year, and we will be able to satisfy the needs of the government and the Board of Education. But as it relates to this particular evening, this particular resolution, and this particular point in time, it is critically important that we address the safety of our students. And I think and I hope you'll agree that there can never be a price on enhancing the safety of our greatest assets in life, our children. So with that being said, you're going to be hearing from our superintendent of schools. 
But I'd like to share with you in advance before Patrick comes up to speak, and I'm sure you can appreciate this. This is a public meeting. It's televised. It'll be archived on the internet. Anybody can watch this meeting. So when we come forward and identify school system security enhancements, we can't be exactly specific as to what we're going to do by school. Because by illustrating that and outlining that, we could inadvertently create a vulnerability in the very plan that we're bringing forward tonight. When we introduce security, in this case in our school systems, we're not intentionally being oblique in terms of the specifics, but again, we have to be very careful in the event, God forbid, there's someone out there who is looking to exploit the security in our school system. With that being said, thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Is there anyone else up for discussion? Uh, Superintendent Stirk? Good evening, everyone. I would like to begin by thanking Mr. Frieda for his efforts to get this project together and moving quickly. Also, a big thank you to the Board of Finance for their support as well. So we began our research into this proposal in the spring of 2018, when Mr. Frieda asked us to come up with a list of what we would need to make our schools more secure following the Parkland tragedy. At this time, the district also applied for a phase four state safety and security grant. Unfortunately, the district did not receive that grant. However, with the support of Mr. Frieda, we moved forward with bringing the project to the town. And just as a side note, the state did not give us a reason for the denial, just that the grant went to towns with the most need. This project has been com a combined effort between Mr. Frieda, myself, the district's Director of Educational and Informational Technology, Jen Kosniewski, our Director of Building and Grounds, Phil Diana, district and school administrators, as well as our school resource officers and other members of the North Haven Police Department. We spoke with other school districts, walked the buildings with security experts and security manufacturers, and have mapped, studied, and planned for this project for almost two years now. Deputy Chief Glenn also provided us with a roadmap for this project through the use of his 2013 North Haven Public Schools Security Inspection. Currently, there are resource officers at each of our six schools. These officers are vital to the safety of students as well as building security. This project is designed to improve and upgrade our equipment at the schools. It is not intended to replace or diminish the roles of our SROs. This upgrade will assist them in making our schools safer places to learn. Our three area of focus for this plan are delay wanted entry and unwanted movement in our schools, increase our ability to quickly communicate emergency situations both internally and to the police department so that we can react as quickly as possible to emergency situations, improve visibility for daily security operations and for situational awareness in the event of emergency. This proposal also includes a variety of, variety of measures both physical and technical, including but not limited to shatter resistant window film, new doors and new door hardware, security cameras and video management systems, access control systems and security badges, and visitor manager sy management systems that will check visitors against a sexual offender database. In the interest of preserving the safety and security of our students and staff, there are some specifics which we will not share, such as exact locations of new cameras, doors, and window film, exact specifications of technical equipment, and exact areas of concern. At the elementary level, we realize that our schools are getting up there in age and renovations are on the horizon. In preparing this project, we recognize this is a possibility and made certain that the equipment is transferable and that can be utilized in any building project. 
The Board of Education recognizes that there will be ongoing costs around this project outside of the bonded funds. As technology is constantly improving, there will, there will need to be specific and periodic upgrades around the equipment and servers, as well as annual charges for the service plans around these programs. The Board of Education's operating budget will absorb these costs annually beginning in the year 2021-2022. We want to be as open and transparent as possible in our presentation and when answering questions. However, we cannot sacrifice the purpose of this project by being overly specific. Keeping this in mind, we will work hard to answer any questions to the best of our ability. Thank you for your time. He's a little taller. Is there anybody else who would like to speak to this issue? Please raise your hand. Oh. Come on up, the gentleman over there on the left. I'm Fritz Betger, 290 Spring Road. Are these um, annual costs that are as yet unspecified part okay. of the list that you're talking about of things that will not be discussed or itemized? I'm going to ask Superintendent Stirk to come on up so we can answer these questions as they come in. Are there any other questions you have right now, or is that the only one at this point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are not 100% sure what um, manufacturers will be going with with some of these costs, but we know that there'll be some ongoing service costs around our databases, like the sexual offender database that we're using in our schools. Um, but there are no itemized lists at this point. Will there, will there be before we're voting on this amount? No, there will not. Is, isn't the sexual offender database in the cloud? Um, that's a technical question. I'm not too sure the answer of that. Unfortunately, our um, IT director was supposed to be here tonight to help answer some of those questions. Um, she, she fell ill, unfortunately. Um, my guess is it is in the cloud because most information is nowadays, but I, I don't want to say for 100% it is. I will answer the question for your IT director. It's in the cloud. Therefore, what is the need for the server? Well, we're um, trying to align. Our, right now, we have the middle school, which is our most up-to-date school. And we're trying to align all of our servers within all of our schools so we can communicate with each other as well as you know, first responders. OK. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. In anticipation of costs that we will not know, um, uh, I would assume that um, based on the paucity of information that we have received, uh, it would be a logical determination on most people's parts, at least old people like myself, is that we do not have the information necessary to spend $2 million of our hard-earned money um, given the fact that our last three education-based products, uh, projects, which I have also found to be largely unnecessary and supernumerary, um, since we haven't paid for those yet, uh, we should probably um, err on the uh, cautious side and keep our $2 million. Uh, while it is true that our mill rate is not going up this year, uh, many thousands of our homes, including mine, uh, have been raised in appraisal value substantially to compensate for the fact that we are technically not getting a mill increase. Now, I myself, being a simple-minded person, don't really care uh, what you call it. If it's coming out of my pocket, I'm opposed, whether it's a mill rate or an appraisal increase on the value of my home. Therefore, to make a long story short, I urge you to uh, exercise the caution I would exercise and keep the $2 million in your back pocket. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Bedker. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this item? Raise your hand. Yes. Sorry, I forgot my glasses. Good evening, I'm Nancy Barrett, uh, Crestview Drive. Uh, in full disclosure, I am a, a sitting board member on the Board of Finance, however, uh, when this resolution was uh, proposed to the Board of Finance, uh, I was uh, not yet elected. So I'm simply a member of uh, the community speaking tonight. So uh, I certainly support initiatives to keep our children and our teachers and our teaching staff safe. Uh, I'd like to just say that right at the very beginning, but I think in order for our community to be able to make uh, an informed vote, we need both a little bit of context as well as uh, some answers to some very basic questions. So I'd like to take everyone back to about 2012, and that certainly predates uh, Patrick Sturk as well as Pam Mangini, our, our um, Board of Ed uh, Finance Director. So uh, I'm just going to read to you a, a segment of the uh, Board of Education minutes from the January 10th, 2013 uh, Board of Education meeting, which of course was just a month after the Sandy Hook shootings. Um, Dr. Cronin uh, addressed the, uh, the uh, discussion on school security. There has been a lot of work taking place with the intention of strengthening safety and security in all schools across the district. On Monday, January 7th, 2013, the State Board of Education, in collaboration with other groups, sponsored a day-long safety symposium. Dr. Cronin attended that along with six other administrators from the district. The presenters addressed measures for all schools that have proven to improve safety and security. There's a discussion on the immediate things that districts can be doing in addition to some of the more long-term things that can also be done. On December, uh, January 8th, 2013, uh, Chair Anita Anderson set up a meeting with First Selectman, Police Chief, Deputy Police Chief, Senator Fasano, Representative Yaccarino, and Dr. Cronin. At that meeting, a variety of things were discussed, such as what was needed in North Haven to improve security in the buildings. Dr. Cronin stated that there was some conversation about uh, if there was state and federal money available to do this work, et cetera. Uh, Dr. Cronin reported that on Wednesday, January 19th, 9th of 2013, the area superintendents from Bristol, Cheshire, Hamden, Meriden, Plainville, Plymouth, Southington, and Wallingford met with our police chiefs. That meeting focused on looking at school safety from a regional lens, sharing what we can do immediately in the short term and long term. We will have a follow-up with the area superintendents in March, he said. Uh, Dr. Cronin reported that there also were walkthroughs in each of our schools with the business manager, principals, supervisor of grounds and maintenance, as well as members of the police department. The police department will prepare a report of uh, these walkthroughs and recommendations of what we should be doing. So that's what uh, Mr. Sturk referenced in terms of the report. So this is the context that kind of got the ball rolling. And again, this was back in 2013. So it was referenced, uh, uh, Dr. Cronin referenced some uh, funding from the state and federal government. And lo and behold, uh, the state funded a grant award for the amount of about $75,000 with a local match of $120,000 and change for the town of North Haven. And so some of that money, uh, or all of that money, was directed specifically towards school security. And there may in fact have been other uh, grants, but we haven't been able to track those down. So my questions, that's the context. So my questions are, um, since that report was generated in 2013, have there been additional walkthroughs through all of our uh, schools by the police department? And has that report, A, been carried out in its original form? And has it been updated? I'll just list all of my questions, and then we can come back to each one of them. Um, and then what will happen to those previous improvements that have already been implemented to the tune of about $200,000? Will they be scrapped, or they will, will they be enhanced? by this $2 million bonded project. And then Mr. Frieda has discussed the debt cost, and uh, as Mr. Betker also questioned, will there be recurring annual costs associated with not only the technology service plans, but additional 
upgrades. And what kind of magnitude are we talking about? Bigger than a bread box, you know, millions, thousands, tens of thousands. Um, will there be any additional personnel associated with this particular resolution? I think that that's also a very important consideration, particularly when we are so sensitive to contractual obligations. And lastly, uh, I certainly understand the concern about uh, vulnerability and exposed uh, security associated with uh, revealing the details of this particular resolution. But my question is, will the details actually be exposed when the project is put out to bid? So okay. those are my questions. All right, so Nancy, I think first we'll have um, Superintendent Sturk answer some, and then you want Mr. Frieda to answer the other ones regarding debt. Whoever would like okay, to thanks. All right, start from the beginning. Oh, sure. Okay. So the, the question is, the report that was generated by uh, uh, the chief and deputy chief of the police back in 2013, was it carried out? And has it been updated, including walkthroughs in each of the schools? So yes, there have been walkthroughs <clears throat> since my time here in mm -hmm. 2015. In Ambient Principal Ridge, there, were, there have been walkthroughs with the police department. I do not believe the plan has been updated. Um, however, much of the plan from 2013 is being addressed in this project that we're proposing tonight. Okay. And um, what will happen to the previous improvements that were made to school security in each of our six schools? Will they be scrapped as a result of this $2 million project, or will they be enhanced? So there are no plans to scrap. I'm not 100% sure what were, was in those 2012 updates, but within this project, there's nothing that we're scratching, per se. We're just enhancing or building upon. So you don't know how that money was spent back in 2013? Not offhand, I don't. Okay. Um, and then, uh, again, in terms of the, could we get some specificity in terms of the recurring annual costs associated with this, uh, this particular proposal, both in terms of technology service plans, additional upgrades, as well as personnel? So there'll be no additional personnel needed. Um, and as far as reoccurring, we're not, we're not clear on what will be the reoccurring costs uh, at this point. Will the IT director be overseeing this entire project or will there be outside consultants? Um, she, there will be outside consultants as well. So, so that will be a, a personnel cost? Yes, if you're, I'm sorry, I misunderstood the question. Okay. I thought you okay. meant something so, that as so far in, as So internal or external, I, I, either, gotcha. way, either way counts. Um, and then lastly, will the details of this particular resolution in fact be exposed when the project is put out to bid? I don't know quite how you could put it out to bid without some level of specificity as to what we're looking for, in which case then why can't we just hear it tonight? So there are some parts of the project that will be going out um, and there are some that are sole source providers uh, where that specific information and the specific um, programs or platforms that will, are only coming from um, those sole providers, so those will not be going out to, to bid. So, so you already have providers in mind? It's not something that will go out to a uh, closed or sealed bidding process? Some of the project will go out, not all of it. Okay, because I, I thought we had a $75,000 limit, so that's why I asked that. Um, and then one question that I forgot to ask is, um, you had mentioned um, trying to uh, improve the school's communication system in the, in the event of an emergency. To what extent does this proposal align with the new police communication system that uh, was just completed for, I believe, $4 million? It, it, uh, it does align to it. Uh, there will be some programs that um, this project will, uh, we will be sharing with the police department. Uh, I believe there's some cloud-based um, alert systems for lack of a better word, uh, that, are, that are part of the project. But as far as uh, the communication, I do know um, outside of the project, the schools are receiving some, some um, equipment um, from uh, the police department, like walkie-talkies and things like that, to, that align with this uh, project that just went through with the police department. But as far as the, uh, the new project, it'll be some um, programs that, uh, that align. I'm not sure how well they align with the current one. That's something I can find out for you. Okay. D don't we already have walkie-talkies in all the schools? We do, but they do not communicate with the police department. Ah, okay. Now I understand. And then lastly, uh, 
why was the Board of Education not involved in the discussions between you, Mr. Sturk, and Mr. Frieda? It, it sounds like this was presented to them, but there wasn't necessarily an involvement by the Board of Education or even a vote. There was not a vote, but um, they were notified throughout the process. It even predates me uh, as well. It really got off the ground when, when I uh, came into the role. Uh, but the Board of Ed was unanimously behind it. They just did not take a vote and updated throughout. Okay, that's, those are all my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to item one? Okay, Mr. Katz. Chairman Katz, Sherwood Drive. I think I just have two points to question. And uh, as far as uh, the security and all that, uh, the need for protecting people is very important. But we just went through a, uh, a town meeting where we said anything, any project over $25,000, I believe was the number, must go out to bid. And I just heard the superintendent say, some of these will not go out to bid, which is in violation of our, our uh, charter. So I'd like to have him speak to that. And then I have a question for Mr. Frieda. We usually get a gift from Quinnipiac every year in the $700,000 area. And many years, this money's been spent for various different reasons on various different items. This being a very important item, why can't we apply that $700,000 to this project for this year and then reduce the amount of bond that we would have to take? And then next year, you can use the gift of whatever it is for some of your other pet jobs. So one question for each one. Okay. I'll stay here in case you Stay there. Some guidance. <laughs> so, Sherman, if I can address the Quinnipiac University pilot payment. The $700,000, 564000 of that, roughly, was a voluntary payment. The rest of it were taxes that they paid on some of the buildings that they own. The 564,000, 300,000 of that was booked as revenue, it was, in our, uh, it was in our budget as a revenue item. So we have to satisfy 300,000 of the 564 as a revenue related item because we had anticipated it and it's in the budget as a revenue item. That left $264,000, which has previously been committed by Quinnipiac University to uh, build a fire training facility that we're moving forward with. So the uncertainty of what voluntary payments will be for those municipalities that have negotiated them with these colleges and universities, enrollment's declining right now at the universities. So I'm actually meeting with the president of Quinnipiac University this week to discuss what the future voluntary pilot payments may be. So to say that we have 700,000, we really don't. Some of that goes into the general fund as tax revenue, roughly 136,000. 300,000 we have to book as revenue, and the balance, as I mentioned, has already been earmarked. Question about the earmark. I'm, I'm under the assumption that the earmark was at your suggestion to the board, to uh, Quinnipiac. And I think we have to set our priorities right now where we can wait another year for the training facility because we've been waiting 20 years for it now and put some of that money towards this $2 million project. And uh, I know it's putting you on the spot, uh, but I really think it's important to keep our hands on our funds. Well, you're not putting me on the spot, Sherman. Uh, not at all. Um, so the, uh, the concept of it potentially is doable, but what we're here voting on tonight 
is up to a $2 million bond package. And in terms of the recurring expenses, in any technology that the town has, there are maintenance costs every year that we incur, but those, those maintenance costs are not gonna be millions and millions of dollars. So the biggest expense here is the bonding package which will amortize over, over 20 years. So if your question is, can we use the 264, that's the balance that is the remaining part of Quinnipiac's voluntary payment? I'm not sure. But that is something that, in some respects, doesn't have much to do with what we're here tonight to vote on the resolution that Stacy and Teresa read tonight. So that's what we're voting on tonight. We can address that, whatever the public decides tonight on how, on how they would like to proceed with this project. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Sherman? No, that's another all for you. question about the amount? The $25,000 uh, okay. bid amount. I mean, yeah. We did have a lot of discussion about that. We yes. voted on it. Yes, and I believe I was a little unclear in my explanation as well. Um, so on some of those sole source provider, um, Contracts, from what I gather, they, they will go out to bid. However, there is a non-disclosure um, agreement that will be shared with these vendors. Um, and if they do not get the bid, all that information comes back to us. So there, there will be bids out they will, on even they will those. Go out to, it's, I'm not doubting you, but it's hard to believe that there is a sole source provider of anything in this world. Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, is that Mr. Bedker again? Okay, let me see if there's anyone else first. Yes, right here. All right, hello, uh, Frank Podgewait, uh, Culver Lane. Um, it, we're spending $2 million here. We're going to vote on $2 million with a meeting that uh, has 50 people. Uh, Re regardless of the uh, noble aims of uh, the spending here, uh, uh, I think this should go to a full referendum of the town uh, where every citizen uh, has a chance to be informed on it and vote on it uh, before we have uh, 50 people uh, spend two million bucks. Okay, thank you. Yes, in the back. Hi, my name is Diane Vesicchio. I live on Deborah Lane. I'm also on the Board of Finance, so I heard the presentation. Um, the presentation couldn't be specific. We were not allowed to write notes. So I'm also a parent. I have a child in college, a freshman, and I have one in the high school. And can you imagine what it is to be a parent and pretty much at least once a week get a news alert that somewhere in the country there's a school, any school, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, to hear that there's a shooting. And that affects me personally, and it affects a lot of people. What they're asking for is enhancements to security. So I'm also an IT person, so I, uh, I know what they're talking about with costs. There are things such as sole source provider, unfortunately, I have to deal with that as well. Technology is constantly changing. If you don't update your technology, you're vulnerable to threats, cyber attacks, credit card hacks. So all these things are really important that once you update security, you have to have security contracts. If you don't upgrade, you're vulnerable, and that's how people could get into any system, your credit card, your billing system, anything that you do, your home computer, your phone, your iPad, nothing is totally proof from being cyber attacked. So in my perspective, looking at what they presented, they can't give details, it's a security issue, but isn't our children worth the extra protection to have this project go forward? I know it's hard for people that they don't understand when you're not given specific deals, uh, specific uh, details, but there's a reason for that. And even with us, when they explained it to us on the board, it was kind of general. So a lot of these quotes that are gonna go out it is going to be general. And then as they get into the project with the IT director, the superintendent, they will get into the specifics because they can't, because anybody could be 
watching or hearing, and that opens up to risk. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, Amanda Gabriel. Amanda Gabriel, Renee Lane. Um, I am on the Board of Education here in town, but I do not speak for them, I speak for myself. Um, I had a conversation with my dad about this recently. He and I talk a lot about topics like this because he worked for a long time in the town of Fairfield on their RTM. He's on the opposite side of the polit pol political spectrum from me, but I value his opinion greatly, and it's good to kind of bounce ideas off folks from maybe another generation or from another uh, political side of the spectrum. So he and I were talking about, similar to what Ms. Vesicchio just was talking about, you know, being terrified for your kids. Mine are here with me tonight. And um, it is really hard to send them into school all the time. And he was saying, you know, he was born in 1950-something. I, I won't embarrass him. <laughs> um, but he was saying that in his day, there were air raid drills. And that was the challenge of his generation, was diving under a desk and hoping that the big one wouldn't drop. And I said, but dad, you know, if you had the opportunity to harden your school against the threat, or at least partially against the threat of an air raid drill, and you could do it without increasing taxes, is that something you would want to do? And he said, of course, it's a no-brainer. So, I'm here tonight as a member of the Board of Education who has heard lots of information about this, I've asked lots of questions about this, um, and although I don't have a full and complete picture of what we're going to do, I'm very comfortable with it, and uh, I support it. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for the first time? Seeing no hands, anybody else? Okay, Mr. Bedker, you're up. Uh, the lady who has an IT background, you're familiar with handling data, I assume. Uh, not to be insensitive, but your child has something like, something like a thousand billion times more of a chance to be hooked on heroin or to be hit by a 18-wheeler tomorrow uh, than to um, suffer a terrorist incident in your school or an incident of child molestation, et cetera. Uh, the average uh, time over the last six uh, school incursion incidents uh, in the country, um, they've had like 120 seconds to react. I'm assuming a proactive plan of um, looking at marginal behavior uh, in terms of mental health uh, would probably be a lot more effective than anything you can do with uh, taping up your doors or facial recognition or RFID or anything that we're going to be expected to do in the 21st century. Uh, but I didn't come up here to mention that. Um, that's just an aside. What I really want to do is explain to you about the NAD, uh, the non-disclosure agreement, the, the NDA, uh, that they usually or often give to uh, or sign between uh, IT providers or any type of provider and, uh, and a, a company that wishes to employ them. Um, I'm in IT also. Uh, I've been witness or party to plenty of these. Uh, the, the agreement is between the head of the company or if it's a limited liability or a, or a corporation, uh, the, the corporation itself, and the uh, person who is going to uh, contract for the services. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the actual employees of the company. Uh, so I work for uh, a very large um, uh, aerospace uh, manufacturer uh, in Connecticut, and we would be expected to um, maintain a fairly high level of security in our dealings with third parties. However, as soon as the, um, the deal is like uh, ratified and implemented, 
uh, those NDAs do not affect the employees whatsoever. So in practice, what happens is the next day, uh, whatever has been implemented is pretty much public knowledge. So if these, um, these uh, services that are going to be implemented by these third parties uh, do get implemented, uh, it will be a secret only to you people here, the people who pay for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Betker. Yes, Mr. Katz. Uh, this question is for the gentleman up there. Mr. We Stirk? Have a, we have a, I'm Mr. Stirk, is that Mr. who the question Mr. is? Okay. Mr. Friedrich, yeah. uh, we have a transportation system in North Haven that takes our children to and from schools uh, sports events, uh, uh, zoos, and we have approximately 60 vehicles. The, these vehicles carry anywhere from, half of them carry anywhere from one to four students, and the other half carry as many as 60 students. Are they going to be included in the security program that you're, you're talking about? Or are they just going to be on their own, back and forth, as usual? So the buses are not included in the security plan. However, um, they are not on their own as usual. They have communications in the buses to speak to uh, their hub, as well as have uh, their hub has communications with schools as well as central office. So um, we get updates on any issues very quickly. And again, no, they will not be included in the security project. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Yes, Dot Logan. Dorothy Logan, 2065 Hartford Turnpike. For full disclosure, I am on the Board of Education, but the reason I'm speaking to you tonight is as a retired North Haven teacher and also someone who continues to work at a local community college with um, students with special needs. Um, I think when you think about, I'm an old person, okay? But the important thing about that is the fact that I was teaching when Col Columbine shooting kind of kicked off everything happened. My s children were in high school. They didn't feel safe. Now we're into our second generation of students who have to be worried about uh, the lockdown drills, which I've participated in many of them. Uh, I think we owe it to our children to make our schools as safe as possible, to make them as safe as possible. Also for the teachers, because teachers are heroes when these incidents have, have happened. They've saved children. They've sacrificed their lives. And other you know, uh, school personnel also. So I urge you to please vote for this. Realize we don't have all the details, and somebody that works in a, still works in a school system I don't want to know all the details, because so I know it, somebody that has bad intentions are also going to find out. So please, please pass this uh, resolution. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Anyone else? Okay. Seeing no hands, all in favor of calling the question as to item number one, Please signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed signify by saying nay. Anyone who would like to abstain, please raise your hand. Okay, the motion passes. The moderator will now call, call. We'll, do, we'll vote now, I'm sorry. Okay, we are, we are not, we are not gonna read this into the um, into the record for a third time. So, all in favor of voting in favor of the, I'm sorry, all in favor 
of voting as to item number one, please signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Okay, I believe that would be three nays. Uh, motion passes. The meeting is adjourned. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.